Shalom, shalom. This is Eldayo from One Nation, One Power. We're coming back. All greetings coming to you in the spirit of unity. Trying to get on the same page with all you brothers and sisters before all hell break loose. I thought I was done. I got done with that last video, went into prayer, and started hearing the Holy Spirit give me a little bit more on Amalek. And I'm going to show it to you guys. Then I'm gonna, we're going to go into the book of Hebrews. Because the Most High wants us to pray for faith. He gives faith. He gives a measure of faith severally as he wills to each and every one of us. He's putting it on my heart that some of us don't have enough faith in him right now. When well, we got to get that faith in him so that he can protect us in the time of trouble. The reason we we believe in God, but we don't we don't we don't trust him. A lot of us don't trust him. We believe in him, we say we love him, but we don't trust him. And that stems from how a lot of us was raised. A lot of us was raised in families that broke our trust so much that now it's hard for us to trust. And the Holy Spirit just showed me that. So let's see why the Jewish powers hate Swatsas. Let's see why they call us Swatsas. All right? They call us Swatsas. They don't like black people. Matter of fact, they pass a the law. They're going to try to put all dark-skinned people out of their land over there. Let's see why they got such a hatred for us. Go with me to the book of Genesis. Go with me to the book of Genesis. This hatred. This hatred is a curse that was put in the earth by the Most High. Go with me to the book of the Genesis. The book of Genesis. Let's see why Amalek hate us so much. Let's see why they was the first one in Exodus chapter 17, verse 13 and 14 we had a fight with. Genesis chapter 3. We want to start at uh, verse number 14. I'm going to read it just like it read for the babies. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, unto the who? To the serpent. Unto the who? To the serpent. Because thou hast done this. What did he do? He tricked Eve into eating the apple. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed, thy seed, that thy seed there is the devil's children, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So in Genesis 3.15, the Most High put natural hatred between the woman's seed and Satan see. Do you guys see this? Now go to Exodus chapter 3, chapter 17. Exodus 17. Exodus 17. Genesis, Exodus. 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 Chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17. We'll go back. Exodus 17. Exodus 17. Exodus 17. We're going to go up a little bit more this time. Remember, these are the, God, the most I said to the devil, to the serpent, that he will put enmity or hatred between his seed and the woman's seed, meaning the woman's offspring that will come into the earth later on. And the brothers always talk about a seed coming just good from the man. Yeah, we're going to get into that. So, here we have, we want to start at verse 6. Exodus 17 and 6. And behold, I will stand before there, before thee there, upon the rock in Horeb. And thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. 
and he called the name of the place Massa and Mer Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Saying, Is the Lord among us or not? That's what we're saying today. That's why a lot of us are ready to get the help. Is he among us or not? Is he among us or not? Is he among us or not? Right here, they didn't have faith yet. So right here, they're in a position, they're wondering if, if God with them or not. Even though the Most High did miracle signs and wonders and got them out of Egypt. Now right here, they're wondering if God with them or not. Are you in this position? Do you find yourself a little fearful at times, wondering if God is going to be there for you when all hell break loose or if God going to leave you alone to die? A lot of us are right here, right now. Right here. Exodus 17 and 7. Is the Lord among us or not? Is he among us or not? I'm here today to let you know he is among us. Verse number 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Then came who? Amalek. Amalek right on the scene right after the miracle of the water coming out the rock. This go right back. You want to take your precept of uh, Genesis 3. 14 and 15, that the most high will put enmity, hatred between Satan's seed, the serpent seed, and the woman's seed. Here is the hatred. Right here. Right off the bat. Satan's seed hating the woman's seed. Now, you got it for the woman in Exodus 3, 14 and 15. Who ended up taking her place? Who ended up taking Eve's place as the representative of the woman in the earth? You want to go now? Let's go to let's go to Jeremiah six two. Jeremiah six two. Jeremiah six two. Let's go to Jeremiah six two. Jeremiah six and two. Jeremiah six and two. Now remember, even in in Genesis three fourteen and fifteen, Eve was the woman there. Her seed. Let's see what woman took her place. Jeremiah 6 and 2. I have, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. To a comely and delicate woman. Now he has likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Just talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Now he has likened us to a comely and delicate woman. To a comely and delicate woman. Jeremiah 6 and 2. He likened us to a comely and delicate woman. Why he the Almighty and the All Powerful? We we to him we weak and we frail. To him we like a little slugger, like an ant. To the Most High, that's how much power he is compared to us. So let's prove this one more woman. Go to Re Revelation twelve and one. Revelation twelve and one, the most misconstrued passage in the whole Bible. Now you got to know Jeremiah six and two. I am liking. A, a Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman. Now who was this woman? Jeremiah 6 and 2. Clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 and, a, and, a, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. A crown of 12 stars upon this woman's head in Revelation 12 and 1. Now go to Genesis 35 and 22. Here a little and there a little. Genesis 35 and 22. Genesis 35 and 22. Genesis 35 and 22. Genesis 12. Genesis. Is it 35 and 22? We can do this one. Let's do this one. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. This is the part we want right here. Now the sons of Jacob were how many? Twelve. Twelve. They represent the twelve stars. Are you following me? In your Bible. They represent the twelve stars. Let's prove it with some more. Stay in Exodus. Let's go to 28, 21. Exodus. 28, 21. 
Another precept, Exodus 28. Let's get a better one than that. 28, 21. Exodus 28 and 21. Exodus 28 and 21. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel. 12, 12, 12, according to their names, like the engravings on a signet. Every one with his name shall be shall they be according to the 12 tribes. Did you guys see that? According to the 12 tribes. Stay in Exodus, go to 32, 13. Exodus 32, 13. Exodus 32, 13. Exodus 32, 13. Ready? Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thy own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, as the what? Stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. What did he say he was going to do? He was going to multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. Go back to Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. 12 stars. The Most High just told Abraham that he was going to multiply his seed as the stars of what? Heaven. That, rep that woman right there is representing the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now go with me to the book of Hebrews. Go with me to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. Now remember, Amalek is the seed of the serpent. That's why they hate us so much. That's why they teach their people not to uh, marry with us. You guys thought that they, because they, they want the world to think that they're doing that because they're the chosen people of God. No, they're doing that because they're the chosen people of the Bible, who the Bible said they chosen God is. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You can't see the evidence of the evidence of things not seen. You can't see it. For by it the elders obtain a good report. This is Hebrews 11 and 2. How did the elders obtain a good report? It wasn't just by keeping the law, statutes, and the commandments. It wasn't just by saying I'm saved by grace. Either. Let's read and see. Through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Verse 4. By faith. Listen to this real good. Watch. Go along with me. By faith. By faith. These are examples of what faith is. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God, that he pleased God. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. But without faith, is it, it is impossible to please him. Now, everybody think they have faith, but let's keep reading. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The more you seek God, the more he'll bless you. That right there should be a motivational tool for a lot of you out there. You want God to anoint you, give you the Holy Spirit? You got to seek God. You got to go after God. You got to do a little bit more than everybody else. Verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not yet, not seen as yet. This is for everybody that came on this page when the DHS said we're going to have no lights and no power. And everybody that came on that page that's operating in the flesh and don't have the Holy Ghost. They, oh, we tripping. That ain't in the Bible. We don't do that. I told you guys that Noah was a prepper. 
You got to laugh at that. You got to thought that I was, uh, where is it at in the Bible? Let's go. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, by faith, by faith. What did Noah do? By faith. Did Noah sit down and say, by faith, God going to just take care of me, so I'm going to sit here on my couch? By faith, God going to take care of me, so I'm just, I can just keep going to church on Sunday, singing in the choir, eating pickled pigs, pig feet, pork chops, biggest Volkswagen hubcaps. God, I got faith. That's where all our people are. I got faith in God. God going to take care of me. Let's see if Noah had that mentality. Hebrews 11 and 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, moved with fear, moved with fear, moved with fear. Why am I repeating that? He fear mongering. Moved with fear. What God told Moses was so scary. Moses was moving with fear. Can you guys see Moses moving? I, I mean, Noah moving. I can. Can you see Noah moving? I can. Can you see him uncomfortable? I can. Can you see him drinking his wine faster now? <laughs> Let's read verse 7 again. I'm showing you what faith is. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. Moved with fear. Oh, he was moving, getting ready. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Did what? Prepared an ark for the saving of his house. Now, what if Moses would not have prepared this ark? What would have happened to his house? Thank you. Let's read this again in its complicity. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Faith without works is what? Dead. You got to do something to have faith. This verse just told all of us that you can't just sit back and say, I got faith without doing something. Well, okay, watch this. Let me give you some examples. When Yeshua the Christ was healing people in the New Testament, when he was healing people, when he got done, what did he say to them? Your faith has made you what? Whole. He, his they had to come to him and believe that something was going to happen for them. I'm going to say that again real slow. They had to come to him like the woman with the issue of blood. If she would have just stood back in the crowd and wouldn't have pressed her way in to touch the hem of his garment, she wouldn't have never got healed. If she would have said, oh, he, he walking by. I'm just going to believe him right now for a healing. I'm just going to believe right now for a healing. The Son of God is walking by. Praise the Lord. I love me some Jesus. Ain't that what our mom and them be doing? Oh, praise Jesus. I just love Jesus. standing there. He walking by in a crowd. This woman ran in there, got to push your Negroes to the side. Can you see it? Get down. Get out. Get out. Pushed them out the way to touch him. And then when she touched him, he already knew she was coming. He was the son of the most high God. He said, who touched me? <laughs> she used her faith. That's why he said, who touched me? He knew that woman had faith. Whoever that was that touched the hem of his garment touched them fringes. Let's read verse 7 again. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Let's see. Paul is still on right now. Things not seen as yet. Things not seen as yet. Kitchen clean. <laughs> Things not seen as yet. <laughs> we still on the internet. Things not seen as yet. <laughs> Some of you still got Christmas trees all up in your house and you know you're having a good time. Things not seen as yet. <laughs> See, this is when everything was going good. <laughs> Nobody seen nothing yet, yet, yet. But Noah moved with fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed 
and he went out not knowing whether he went. Verse 9, by faith he should join in the land of promise, as in a strange country, like where I'm dwelling, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Verse 10, for he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Verse 11, through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. She judged him what? Faithful who had promised. He promised that she was going to have a baby. She believed it. She wasn't doubting. She believed it. Verse 12. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. So many as the stars of the sky in multitude. Did we just read that over there in the book of Genesis? That God was going to make his seed as the stars of heaven. Many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand, which is by the seashore, innumerable. What? Innumerable. How many are the children of Israel? We what? Innumerable. This is Hebrews 11 and 12. Ha. Innumerable. You guys know you can't count that? Let's keep going. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Confess what? That they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Are we confessing that we are strangers and pilgrims on the earth? Or are we confessing that we United States American citizens? This is Hebrews 11 and 13. You know why you're confessing that you're strangers and pilgrims on the earth? Because you've been promised, Revelation 21 and 22, to be taken to the new kingdom. A kingdom better than this. A kingdom with streets paved with gold. A kingdom where you ain't got to have no more mortgage payments. A kingdom where you don't have no more light payments. A kingdom where you don't have no more grocery bills. A kingdom you promised something far better than where you are at now. So you should be strangers and pilgrims in this land. So how you voting? Because this your this this your kingdom. Verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. That they seek a country. Are you seeking a country? Are you happy in this country? Are you seeking a country? Are you seeking to flee to another country? Let me read verse 14 again real slow. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Let me read Hebrews 11 and 13 and 12 together. These all died in faith, in faith, not having received the promises. They didn't even receive the promises yet. But having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed and confessed and confessed. You got to confess and I got to confess. I'm going to confess this right now with you. And confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. I confess right now with my mouth that I am a stranger and a pilgrim on the earth. Verse 14. For they that say such things declare, I just declare plainly that they seek a country. That they seek a country. That they seek a country. Verse 15. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. To what? Have returned. Ain't that what our ancestors was trying to do? Verse, no faith. Verse 16. But now they desire a better country. But now they desire a better country. But now they desire a better country. You know why I'm desiring a better country? Because I got enough sense to know. If I leave Babylon, I'm going downward. It's bad enough we paying mortgages. But look how we live. 
This is one room in my house. Look how we live. But we poor. Broke, busted, and disgusted. All of them got driving a piece of car. Got a little money in the bank. Got top ramen. Mama used to tell me, son, when you get older, if the roof don't leak, the toilet flush, and you got a little food in the cabinet, be satisfied. You know my mama was from the South. Be satisfied. So here we are. We're going to seek a better country. Where are you going to flee to that can be better than this? <laughs> Boy, you guys looking to go somewhere, you're going to be eating rats to survive. You're going to be eating cats and dogs. They already trying to serve that up over here on us. We fighting against that. But you're going to go somewhere where you ain't got it this good. And, and you done had it this good all your life. You don't know what it is to have a hard time. Some of you going to go somewhere and fall apart. Verse 16. But now they desire a better country. A better country. That is, and heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. This is verse 16. God not ashamed to be called their God because these all these people are seeking a better country. They declare that they, they pilgrims and strangers on the earth. Even though they're Hebrew Israelites, they're not taken uh, to trying to stake claim to this place. You're seeking a better country. And God is not ashamed to be called their God for he has prepared for them a city. Verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. We'll start right there. Go back to Noah. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews 11 and 7. Let's see what faith is. Then we'll go to the book of James. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Water's still running. And I don't see nothing, I don't see nothing bad happening yet. So since I don't see nothing bad happening yet, what am I supposed to be doing? Oh, let me go over there on my couch and kick my legs up, give me some wine, and just relax. Everything gonna be alright. The rapture coming. <laughs> Hebrews 11 and 7 but by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir he became heir of the righteousness which is by faith how did he became, become heir of the righteousness which is by faith he moved with fear and prepared that ark God spoke to him Rain is coming. What's rain, Most High? A lot of water. A lot of water. A lot of water. I'm going to flood the whole earth. What? I'm going to kill everybody. Oh, he moved with fear. He believed God. He said, let me build me a boat. He didn't sit back and say, oh, the power going out, but uh, God going to take care of us. He the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he changed now. So, I don't know who this is for out there, but you need to go read Hebrews 11 and 7. Now, let's go to the book of James, chapter 2. Don't believe nothing I say. Follow along with me. James chapter 2, verse 18. We want to start at verse 17. If so, faith, if it had not worked, it's dead being alone. Every Christian, everybody that came out of the Christian church, take this verse, put it on a piece of paper, get a magnet, and put it on your refrigerator so every day you get up you can see it. Because you got out of the, one of the most satanic belief systems the planet has ever seen. One of the greatest mind control. They're talking about MK Ultra. This is worse than MK Ultra. To think that you just got faith, you can click your heels like, uh, what was that, that, that movie? What was that movie? I, uh, was it I Dream a Genie? You, you guys remember I Dream a Genie? Uh, uh, what was the other one? Bewitch. That was Bewitch. She clicked her heels. Nah, baby, it don't work like that. 
He, James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so faith, even so faith, even so faith, if it have not works, if it have not works, they are that word that Christians hate. The very word they hate. The very word that make them throw up. Right here. Work, works. Even so faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. So, all my friends that are Christians, that just believe, your faith is dead, according to this verse. Not me. Don't get mad at me. Get mad with God. I'm just quoting from the Bible, verse 17 again. Even so faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. Verse 18, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith. We hear that all the time from the Christians. I got faith in God. That's all I need. And I have works. But I'm going to say I got works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. And I will show you my faith by my works. I'm going to show you my faith by my works. So now faith is not dead being alone because I'm going to show you my faith by my works. Verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. This verse right here go for all my I don't believe Jesus brothers. Thou believest that there is one God. You don't believe in the New Testament. They call it the New Testament. I call it the New Covenant. You don't believe in the New Testament, right? Why is this verse in here? Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. You do good. You do good. You do good. Believe in that. The devils also believe that. <laughs> but the devils got more sense than most of us today because the le next two words, they got enough sense to tremble. <laughs> thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble and tremble and tremble. The devil, ooh, you say his name, ooh, ooh, ooh. What, what we do? <laughs> what we do? Say his name, you backslide. You know, in sin, dancing in sin, partying in sin. <laughs> Not even scared. <laughs> the demons are trembling. <laughs> Oh, I like that because I hate the devil. Verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? You got to need to highlight James 2 and 20. Because God called everybody that got faith without works. He said, your, works is vain. your, your faith is vain. But wilt thou know, O vain man, he called you vain, empty, that faith without works is dead? Why they don't teach this in the church? Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? He was justified by what? Works. When he had offered up Isaac, his son upon the altar. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by work was faith made perfect? Do you want your faith made perfect? You got to do something with your faith. Verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Well, how was it imputed to Abraham for righteousness? Because Abraham had faith with works. I have faith with works. So it's being imputed unto me with righteousness. I got faith in God, but I'm showing my works by keeping his commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Okay. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't be lying on. Okay. I can roll with that. What's so bad about that? So, when somebody say, I ain't keeping no law, because they wicked as hell. I'm going to go ahead and say it. If no other preacher would say it, I say it. You wicked as hell. I'm going to say it again. That sounded good. If you don't want to keep the laws of God, you wicked as hell. 
I can only imagine how many skeletons you building up in your closet. Get them out and repent. Come on up out of here. Sister, come on here and say I'm too much like a Christian pastor. I was a Christian pastor. What you talking about? I ain't no uh, hate monger. You looking for some brother to be balled up in the face, screaming and hollering, yelling, and then when you go and marry him, he beat the hell out, he beat the, he beat the Chinooskis out of you because he's full of hate. All right, raping you and robbing you, and you're afraid to go and tell somebody. It's a lot of sisters out there stuck in them in them camps. They just ain't going to come out and say nothing. But I got the Holy Ghost. I know they're being abused, misused and abused, and afraid to say something. That's right. Devil got their mouth shut. So, faith without works is dead. O oh, vain man, show me thy faith. By thy works. They told us that six months to put up some food and water. And a lot of you out there saying that's fear among you. Hebrews 11 and 7 just told you you don't know what you're talking about. This elder here from one nation, one power. Noah moved with fear when he got that prophetic word from God to make that art. You notice it said to save his house. To save his house. So for all you men out there that's not preparing, you don't care about your house. You don't care about your wife and your kids. You don't care about your If you stand with your mama and she don't believe, at least you should be preparing anyway. This is El from One Nation, One Pop. Hebrews 11 and 7. And I'm going to read it one more time. 7 and 11. I'm going to read it one more time. Is that what we want? What we want? Hebrews what? 11 and 7. Forgive me. Hebrews 11 and 7. Let me read it one more time. Real slow for all of you out there. That, you know, this is slow stuff for you. Hebrews 11 and 7. By faith, Noah. By faith, Noah. Being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark, to the saving of his house. He did what? He prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Noah wasn't selfish. Noah wanted to save his family. So Noah moved with fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Most High came, brought me back on here after prayer. I thought I was done for the day to do this short video for you guys. Faith without works is dead. Noah received a prophetic word from the Most High God that a flood was coming and going to kill everybody on earth. He moved with fear for, and prepared an ark for the saving of his house. This El Dayil. Faith without works is dead. Shalom.